a good thing, you know? Yeah. Knowing that, you know, it's people that think like that, coaches that think like that, you know. Because down here, we a little lost, you know, as far as what we believe. <laughs> Damn, especially the stuff you said about, I wish I'd have met two years ago, I tell you. <laughs> really, really. Because the stuff you said about coaches having their own legenda and that one bad apple would mess a season up. Oh, yeah. I have, I went through that. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, I, I definitely <laughs> want to get into that because I, I want to learn your story, too, because, I mean, the reason why I did this Q&A is because I, I want to be able to answer any questions or anything you got. And I want to know I want to know your story and background, too, um, just to lay a background, um, a baseline here real quick. Mm hmm. I'm recording this uh, this live for the okay. other guys that's going to be coming in. Okay. And um, the baseline topic is preparing for a winning season. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to go over a few things as it relates mm -hmm. to, you know, the season. But mm -hmm. um, the most important part for me is answering your questions, learning you, learning your story, you know, and all of that good stuff. All right. Um. Nothing is off limits either, Coach. You know, feel free to bounce anything off of me. This is this is your time. And uh, if anybody else, you know, dive on or um, watching this video on a replay, um, feel free to drop your questions in the comments and all of that good stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, with that being said, Coach, man, can can you tell me a little bit about yourself a little bit and, and you know, go into kind of your story and kind of what what you know going on how how long have you been coaching well it's it's kind of actually what you said you know i had a little boy some years ago i guess 15 mm -hmm. years ago uh -huh. and um i played high school ball from, um i played college ball when i had him i got back in it you know what i mean and realized that i had a serious love for it you know yeah. and um i was just helping him out but then i grew and I realized that it was a lot different from when I played. You know, a lot of coaches, even now that I hired, that, that worked with me think that, you know, coaching is different when you're coaching youth. You know what I'm saying? Right. Then high school. It's a whole nother ball game. You know what I'm saying? So he's 15 now. He's on a varsity garden center for his high school. And I just continue coaching, you know. And, um, I recently, once I, I, I actually really, I felt like I just got better for three years ago. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I started running the air raid mix with a little double wing and a little beast. You know what I'm saying? Nice. But like you said, I noticed on my beast formation, I was getting positive yards. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, with air raid, um, you know, I want to. I'm. I'm. I, I right now. I'm a pres. I'm vice president of the football league. They just hired me. I'm trying to build up everything. Get they get get you know get the program back up and. Right. I want to run a consistently. I want to run something consistent from AU all the way to fourteen U. And I the same defense, the same offense, everything the same. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm trying to figure out. I like air raid. I like the principles. It's some of the same principles you got, actually, especially yeah. that RPO playbook. Yeah. And um, I'm just basically just, you know, and actually the last three years I won championships, you know what I'm saying? Three, you know what I'm saying? That's awesome. And um, once I switched up my, once I got the information, you know, and um, I'm just, just, just going into this positive year trying to, get this organization up because they, they used to lose and they got a losing mentality, a losing culture. I'm trying to change the culture and coach up the coaches that they do have because they do a lot of things wrong, but they don't know. Like I didn't know, yeah. you know what I mean? I never knew, you know, and that's basically where I'm at right now. You know what I'm saying? And I do got a few questions about one particular question that I got. I just wanted to ask you, Okay, what made you switch your blocking scheme up to the traditional zone blocking, then you know the double wing, the um, um, double wing blocking, the double teams. I kind of understand why you did it. It's just mm -hmm. that I. It's funny that you did that because I was always saying that to myself, like I want to get my running backs, you know, 
the option to pick what hole open up. And it's oh. funny you said that. And I was like, dang, it, it was real, it was real different. And I just want to ask you, how did that work and why did you switch it from this traditional? Okay, great question. <laughs> and and I'm gonna make this as practical and as simple as possible, coach. <laughs> For me, what I noticed when my guys was running the beast, right? Mm -hmm. Is that there's running lanes that naturally would open up. You know, you had you had a running lane opening up off tackle. You had running lane opening up right off the butt of the center. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you even had an outside running lane open up. Mm -hmm. But the outside blocking scheme or even the wide zone blocking scheme does mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. it allows our skill guys to be able to choose the lane. And it allows us as coaches to be able to train the kid mm -hmm. to know how to read those zone blocking schemes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so really – the the change is more philosophical, right? Mental, than, yeah. yeah, yeah, than it is even physical because the running lanes was opening up anyway. But right. the way we was training our kids, you know, with you know, gap down backer, we were just saying, okay, run off tackle, run, you know, sixteen. Let's go to the six, you know, six hole, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But with outside zone, it gives our kids more versatility and options to pick their running lane. So mm. that's why we kind of, you know, went with that outside in, you know, wide zone blocking scheme. So was it, is it easier to teach? Like, I'm a, it looks like I'm going to be dealing with multiple age groups. So it, it's teaching. I guess what I used to always teach is, you know, severe angle blocking, you know, yeah, down blocking. And it's something similar. Yeah. And I'm just trying to create, you know, because I want to be able to teach it and make sure that I, my lang my language is right and I'm teaching it good. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. But I yeah. surely see how simple it it could be. It, I think we we kind of complex. We make it complex when that way of blocking actually is simple. Facts. <laughs> so, so what what I would do if I was in your situation, and mm -hmm. I'm kind of I'm kind of <laughs> in this situation with you this year because mm -hmm. I'm starting a brand new program, Lakeview Ducks, and okay. in a completely different area, right? Okay. The way I usually orchestrate things with my programs, number one, philosophically, I'm looking at my program as a high school prep program, right? Got you. So, with that mindset, okay, there are levels to growth and development based on the tiers of the teams I have, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So with my program, we got three teams. We got mm -hmm. the six through eight, right. the nine and 10, and then yeah. our senior team, the 11 and 12, right? Yeah, okay. So what I would do in your situation is I may just teach down blocking to my younger kids, my mm -hmm. six through eight, so they can master that style of blocking because mm – -hmm. The beauty about the beast formation, you can down block outside zone, wide zone, and be very successful. Yes. But gap, what I've learned in my experience, and you probably uh, have seen this as well, down blocking is one of the simplest, you know, ways to teach your kid how to yep. block. Yeah. That down blocking, that dry blocking. Mm -hmm. So for you, you could start with your younger kids, the six through 18. I don't know how your system set up with your mm -hmm. league, but mm -hmm. with your younger boys, you can teach them down blocking and have them master that. So once they come up to the nine and 10, now you're teaching down blocking outside zone. Now mm -hmm. they already know the down blocking scheme. Now they're learning to master the outside zone, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you go to your senior team, Mm -hmm. We're trying to prepare them for middle school, right? In high school, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Now we're teaching them. They got the down blocking down. They got the outside zone down. Now we teach them wide zone, you know, things of that yeah. nature. So you can do it that way, kind of like grade levels, you know, first grade, second grade, third grade. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got you, man. I, I, I totally, I totally agree, you know, because that it, it was easier teaching that. Because yeah. I remember I had to teach double teams. Um, you know, I, I always in my mind, I was getting to the point to where, you know, I felt like look, trying to move someone laterally is easier than trying to push them 80 feet back. That, yeah. You know, five feet back because it's good D linemen and they're getting faster. They're not just about to let you push them back. You know? <laughs> right. They're not. And, and, you know, and and I'm going I'm, I'm entering a new league, but I've been in this league when I first started. 
and mm-hmm. I know all they run is a f- five three or a four four, and they want to blitz you to see if you good and you know to try to you know that's all they want to do right. you know what i mean and i think that's why i was more successful with the air raid because we kind of we picked our poison we looked and seen you know that the, the way that system is designed you know it's it's kind of you got to pick your it's this place to pick your poison on the weakness in the defense on what they're giving you oh they doing this we're gonna do that and when i did it it was like oh my god i love this and this is i've been studying that but I always been a beast formation type of guy, you know. Right. I just wasn't good at it, you know what I mean? Until I yeah. got, I actually got the experience. And you totally right. I noticed that the A gap will always pop open sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, and I and I seen it, but like I couldn't put it together yet, you know. I was still trying to figure this youth thing out, you know, and do my studying, you know what I'm saying? Right. But um, I'm just gonna build a system. I'm looking to build a system that you can carry over to high school because that's all my son do. But see, my son was playing since he was five. So, you know, it was quite obvious. And, you know, he's a straight-A student. that that Coaches was going to gravitate to him, you know what I mean, because he understand blocking and all that. But I I, I like that. I liked how you switched that zone blocking up. I mean, that's something that I'm going to get better and teach to teach, you know what I'm saying, Um, you know, moving forward, you know. Absolutely. Let let me ask you this, Coach. Mm Mm-hmm. The, on the um with the a gap and then i wanted to ask you about your uh your program too you may mention a few minutes ago about yes to get your oh, coaches oh. together <laughs> and all of that good stuff right um oh hope we didn't lose you let's see can you hear me coach i think you're on mute coach Am I good go. now? I'm there good. Go. You good? You uh, good. Somebody was ringing my phone, but uh, basically, I had a friend, and I just got tired of her getting ran over by coaches and stuff over the years. I would watch, and she would try to get me there, but I wouldn't go there because I just felt like it's like I, I don't want to say this. And our league, being in Detroit, you know, you mentioned certain teams, we automatically like garbage. You know that. You. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. They've been they've been losing. And I didn't really want to associate my name with it, but by her being such a good friend and me learning, you know, getting this knowledge, I felt like it'd be a challenge for me to turn this system, this this situation around, you know. And that's basically what I want to do. But it's not the kids that I'm seeing was the problem. It was the coaches. Yeah. They don't know how to prepare. They don't know how to. It's like I have to coach the coaches because they don't understand how to run a practice, you know. You're yeah. messing around with some that damn fuck. Now, then when I first went to the conditioning, <laughs> they doing running back drills with ladders and stuff. And the kids don't know how to do a proper fucking stance. You know, I'm like, what are you doing? You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, come on, man. You know, that's the that's the mentality I'm dealing with. But they seem to want to learn. The kids is great, man. You know, but right now it's like when my whole focus, like I told everybody, we need to be recruiting. Yeah. That's what we need to do. And then when we get the kids, we we have to have the coaches that know how to coach. Just lucky enough, I got three great coaches coming along with me. You know what yeah. I mean? And you so know, so, yeah, man, cool, cool. Yeah, you know, the, <laughs> the thing about the coaches, and, and this is something that I'm being on. This is why, I like, if you notice, mm-hmm. with me, what I teach more than any other youth coach I've seen online is I focus on organizational development. because yes. It, it's like, bro, it, it's so important. We can talk X's and O's all day in schemes and, and yeah. win the games, but if that organization is not right, it will ruin your season before it starts. And having inexperienced coaches can create a nightmare season. Now, one thing that I kind of take pride in in my program is I'm really big on training my coaches, making sure my coaches are in alignment with what my standards are, what I mm-hmm. teach. I like that. Um, the way I do things because, you know, one day my coaches are going to want to either start their own team or start their own program. Yeah. And I want to make sure that, my, you know, my name is not, you know, ran in the mud because these coaches are really hurting these kids. So, mm-hmm. The one thing that I would recommend that you do, coach, and this, mm-hmm. and I'm sharing this because it's something I do. As a matter of fact, 
I literally talked to a coach that's interested in being part of my program last night. Mm-hmm. And um, I know this guy, he he coached my oldest daughter. My daughter's uh, she plays softball. And um, this guy coached for another youth football program. And I just know him and I got a lot of respect for him. And he's interested in being my defensive coordinator. Mm-hmm. Well, the thing I told him was before I say yes to anything, anything, I want us to meet and I want to get to know you better. I need to know your coaching philosophy. You need to know mine because I need to know if we're in alignment with each other because the yes. last thing I want That's is so to smart. Talk here, you know, with my defensive coordinator. Mm-hmm. And, you know, what's crazy is I'm kind of in coaching recruiting season, you know, with my program. Mm-hmm. Every coach that I get right now in this time of the year, nine times out of ten, I'm looking at them as a head coach on a team, right, mm-hmm. for one of the teams. So if that coach got a track record of being negative, being toxic, don't know how to properly, you know, coach and teach the kids, maybe that coach isn't ready to head coach. Maybe me being the program director and the head coach of the senior team, maybe I need to take these coaches to the side and do personal training with them, which is something I do. So that may be something that you want to do, do either like a, a bi-weekly coaches clinic or a monthly coaches clinic to make sure everybody's, you know, in alignment. Mm -hmm. And the last thing, coach, I'll say this real quick is make sure you got guys that's bought into you and will be consistently there for you in your program. Okay. That's so important because you get cats. If they get comfortable, what they'll do is, They'll come to practice when they want to. They come up with excuses of why they can't be there. Boy, oh, boy. And when they do come, now they messing your culture up because now the parents start being inconsistent. The kids Mm -hmm. start being inconsistent. They mess up your team brand. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. And my question to you is, by, you know, if I, it's a certain way I do things. And I know my attitude, I could be like, fire everybody. But (laughs) it ain't right. And I know that's not the right way to go. But I know we kind of, it's like, it's the org need these coaches. You know what I'm saying? And I don't, I don't, I want to, I want, I want them to go do right. But it's, I want to ease them into it to where I'm not kind of forcing everybody out. You know what I'm saying? So is it, should I just, that's what I want to know. How do I keep them there? And keep them to, and want to learn, you know, instead of just having their own attitude. Because it, it was a, we do need coaches. And I'm not gonna sit here and lie. I can't coach everything. You know what right. I mean? I can't do it. You know, but I will. I have been with programs where I just started off just with two team, two age groups, eight uh-huh. U and ten U, and we built from there. My last program, we did it. Yeah. You know, and that's and I just want to, you know, how can I push my message without. Mm, you know, uh, you know, steering people the wrong way. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, man. The number one thing you do is this, you know, you want to create a coaching training program, a coaching development program. Yes. Right? Um, that's the most professional, the most strategic way to do things. And you have to make it mandatory that they attend these trainings because, Boom, coach. Where was you at 10 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, coach, like, because we're in youth football, you got a lot of guys that volunteer their time and they want to make an impact, but they don't truly know the game in a competitive way. So, yep. you know, I don't know if you ever heard the term, you know, coaching, coaching trees, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's kind of like Nick Saban. Nick Saban got a coaching tree of other yes. coaches who learn from him, and now they coach their own team. The same thing is true in youth football as well. It's just not talked about. It's you not. have to now begin to make your own coaching tree. And the way you do that is through establishing your own coaching program mm-hmm. where you're coaching and training these guys, and you basically teach them everything that you want them to know from A to Z. I would start with your coaching philosophy, your mission for the program, how you want your program to be ran, um, your your expectations for them, your Mm -hmm. expectations for the kids. This all is going to begin to teach them, right? Yes. And then as time go by, now you're outlining, okay, this is how our practice is going to be. You know, you can let them know 
what days you're going to do practice, if you want them to practice together, mm -hmm. um, whatever you want to do, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the number one thing that I would recommend. The other thing you made mention of that I love, and this is something that I've done in the past, is if I'm starting a program in a certain city and it's, it's a new program, I may start with only one team, right? I, I mean, like that. I think that's smart. Yeah, because it creates a lot of more problems when you have multiple teams and it's a lot of fires you have to put out, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, we've started with one team and we put all our focus in on those kids and all the coaches who's in my program. Guess what? The following year, I'm able to put them over teams because now they know my expectations. They know yes. what now, in certain cases, you're not able to do that, you know, depending on your league and kind of your situation. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, because you, you're you, already committed to right, one of the right, toughest like, leagues, you know, like, come on, man. Right. Sure, so, sure. like, like even here, right, let me, let me kind of tell you the lay of the land here. Right. So, you know, I started a program in my home city or home, home neighborhood mm -hmm. two, three years ago, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was cool. But now I decided to, to start a program closer to my house because I had to drive 30, 35 minutes away. Oh, yeah, I've been that way. You know, and man, I, I did that for like seven, eight years, man. Crazy. That wear and tear on you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so now the program that I'm starting, the field we're at, 10 minutes away from the house, all of that. Yeah. But the culture is different up here, right? Yeah. So even if I wanted to start one team, it's going to be hard for me to do it because the demand is so high for a team. And we know we're going to get a lot of kids, a lot of parents. Yes. You know, it's only been one other youth football program in this area spanning about 20 miles. So to have mm -hmm. another one that's closer to the school, things of that nature, we, we already got, you know, shucks, 30 kids signed up and we have, we, our camp is in about 20 days. Right. Wow. You know, like it, it just, that, that's due to the demand of everything, right? So we're going to have multiple teams, whether I like it or not. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So what I'm doing now is literally, I told my wife this last night. I said, man, we got to go ahead and get at least, you know, the three to four guys that I got in my mind who would be yes. great kid coaches for the other mm -hmm. age groups. I'm always over the senior team. Okay. I got a kid that, well, he's actually my nephew. He, I coached him Little League. Now he's at the age where he's been coaching for me for about four years now. Okay. And he's going to be over the nine and 10 year olds. Why? And he know me from A to Z because I trained him. He came under my coaching tree. right? <laughs> yeah. Then we have two new guys who are coming that coach with the other program, but I've had mm. relationships with for about probably four years because they coach my daughters mm. right, with softball. So I got solid guys. Oh, yeah. And this is something you want to do, coach, too. Mm -hmm. Make sure you set a standard for the kind of guys you want to head coach yes. in the program. So, like, one of my standards is you got to be a high character guy. You can't mm -hmm. be toxic and be somebody who comes from another program that calls like a lot of major issues and things. Yes. Like that. And you got to, you got to, you got to look at youth football as a way to make a major community impact in the lives of the kids it can't just be x's and o's yes yes when you get them kind of character guys in your program coach it's going to be easy for you to become the standard fast mm -hmm. that's some valuable information you know what i mean because it takes time to be that type of person you know what i'm saying yeah to, to I, I i just been i just been through so much you know what i mean and as i got more experience i was able to we, like you say, pick them guys and know what kind of guys I wanted. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And believe it or not, the best the best guys that I have gotten, you nailed this in one of your videos. Yeah, I know. It's been parents that just came with their kids yeah. that I could teach. Them been the best coaches. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the, hands down, the best coaches I've had was guys who bring bring their son. Mm -hmm. They don't say nothing at, you know, the first two, three weeks of practice. They're just standing there. They're looking at their son. Mm -hmm. You know, they may see that you need help with holding a pad or something. They'd be like, I can help if you need me to. You know, I can hold yeah. a pad if you need me to. <laughs> they humble. They may not even know a hell of a lot about football, right? Mm -hmm. But they're humble. They, they believe in you and they bought in the program. I took those guys in and made them coaches. And at the end of the season, they're like, coach, man, you changed my life, man. 
You oh, know, I've man. been trying to impact my son and build a relationship. And now I can talk to my son about football because I'm out there with him. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, that's what it's about, man. Yeah, that's that why is. I love what I do. You are, you you totally right. They've been my best coaches. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about it. No doubt. Yeah, about it. I, I and I and it's like it's it's very weird, you know. But and you like you say the X's and O's is there. It's just now it's about building that finding the right people. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, they lost a lot of kids too as well from coaches taking kids. You know what yeah. I mean from her, and I've seen that. So I'm just evaluating. Everything I need to evaluate is, you know, but I always thought first thing culture. Yeah. God, because it's like, you know, and, and the minute that I went there, I ran condition, conditioning. You could just see the change in kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You could see everything switching up for the better. And I'm a, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Have a coaching clinic every week, too. Yeah. I have to do that, you know, because it, it seems like they, they, they don't mean to do it. They just don't know. You know what I'm saying? They don't know, you know? And so just the coach, I see some, she got some good people there. She had a couple good, she got some good people. She's seen the fire, the, the bad apples out of there. So I'm glad I ain't got to deal good. with that. You know what I'm saying? So let me ask you this coach about kind of your, your program, because it mm -hmm. sounds like you, you building it ground up. I got two questions I want to ask. Go ahead. Go ahead. Number one, what all age groups do you have in your program? Okay. Um, all right, down here in Michigan, and um, it's like this is how a lot of age groups go. Okay. All right, right now, last year, uh, since uh, Boys and Girls Club came in and Sound Body, Sound Mind, they like they came in and during the COVID and they benefited and they took like a lot of team, the best teams, and it's like the ACC of all the teams, you know what I'm saying? Then the rest of everybody's just, you know, like the same way, like college. So yeah. what we have here is like this recently they just started putting pot one and we always put six shoe pass on kids, but um all the other leagues never did it. So we got six U, mm -hmm. um seven now they got the ACC league, they got seven U, six U, seven U, mm -hmm. eight U, nine U, ten U, eleven U, twelve U, some not a lot of 13U and 14U, but a lot of the regular leagues just have eight, six, eight, 10, 12, and 14. That's what that's that's mostly the regular leagues, you know. And what's going on here is just I seen this coming, coach. Uh-huh. And this come from them kind of coaches getting mad, coaches getting mad saying I can form my own stuff. We got <laughs> so many teams, so many teams out here. What's and, and so many leagues trying to form? It's just a couple leagues, and they in one year and they out the other. You know what I yeah. mean? That's what's going on in Detroit, Michigan, right now. Yeah, you know, and you still got the top of the top. Hell, my team that I played for was the East Side Raiders. I'm mm -hmm. 50 years old. They've been in the game 50 years. They still strong. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like we got certain teams that's going to be here no matter what. You yeah. know, and that's what's going on with that. That's our age groups. And this particular woman, what happened last year, she had eight, she had t um, 10, and she had six, eight, 10, 12, and 14. Mm -hmm. What happened was her 14-year-old, 14 14-year-old coach went and got kids that was over the age group, almost messed her up, and her 8U coach quit in the middle of the season and took 18 kids. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So wow. now she's committed i always used to tell her you need to just stop get out of the league that you in form your own independent league you will get games and start with two teams you know and build it from there she never listened you know so mm -hmm. i you know but now she's committed and to having all these teams you know right. she gotta feel at least eight ten and twelve she has to feel them you know what eight, I mean? ten and twelve she has to feel them and when i'm seeing and i'm seeing 30 25 kids at conditioning. I ain't brought my kids over. I ain't got my kids there yet because they playing baseball. Yeah. And I'm still playing basketball, which I encourage. But right, uh, right now, that's where she's staying. And I, I already know that with hard work, I can do it. I can build it up. But that's pretty much it, you know. And I'm looking like, you know, you guys got to recruit. You know, you, you got this obligation. And you don't – I don't see a lot of players here. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, I never had a problem recruiting, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I always 
knew how to go get the kids. You know what I'm saying? Right. But since we got all these teams now, and 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 it's like they stepping on each other. You know what I mean? Like, and that's that's what I'm seeing. Is it's making it more harder for me to recruit because it's more teams. This form of teams just started happening, coach. And now I see, dang, it's kind of hard because every 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 kid I approach, they they over here with this team. You know what I mean? Now it didn't used to be like that. I used to just can go to a basketball court and get like six kids. Like, mm-hmm. boom, we want to play. You know, right. not no more. And right. You know, <laughs> Have you um? Let me ask you this, coach. Have you ever heard of uh the purple cow method? Have you ever heard of it? No, I haven't. The purple cow method. Okay. So what the per the purple cow method is, think about if you're driving, right? You're on a road trip, right? Mm-hmm. And you're driving in a rural area, country area, and mm-hmm. you see a pasture of cows, right? Yeah. While you're driving, you seeing these cows, yeah. black and you know, black and white cows, you see brown cows. Mm-hmm. But then out in a distance, you see a freaking purple cow. Mm-hmm. out there eating grass right mm-hmm. would that not intrigue you and make you want to stop and see what the hell you're looking at yes right? yes so the oh, i same, see what you're getting at <laughs> yeah you see where i'm going with this <laughs> yeah i see i got you so when you're in an oversaturated environment where there's a plethora of youth football teams you have to be that program that stands out above the rest same mm-hmm. we're dealing with the same issue down here in tuscaloosa right i'm in tuscaloosa mm-hmm. alabama you know what's down here oh it's, it's, wow yeah, yeah. good players down there too man, man no, nothing but talent a lot of Woo! skilled kids um and we have we have two main leagues in tuscaloosa we have one like more of like a travel team like mm-hmm. travel league yeah and we have more of like a rec league well, it really don't matter which league you in because yeah. there's so much talent. But the problem that we have now is there are so many teams that start and, and they, they pull kids and they recruit kids and they form these super teams and things. Yes. Like that, right. We do. Yep. And so the question is, how in the hell can you stand out with your program and recruit the right kids? Because, you know, some coaches hate the word recruiting. They you know, have, but whether they, you like it or not, you're going to have to do it. That's just the way do it. That's the lay of the land. If you're trying to do it the kind of the, the old fashioned way and just hope little Jenny come on your team and you, you land some, walk up. some talent. <laughs> good luck. Right. Good luck. Because the, the season guys like me, like you, right. Mm-hmm. We understand that you have to attract these kids and these parents early Especially the quality, I hate to say it like this, but the quality parents and kids is not going to give you a lot of problems throughout the Mm -hmm. season where you can develop and take them to the next level as a coach, right? Mm -hmm. So what what I've understood to be true when you're in an oversaturated market, so to speak, you got to do one of two things. You got to start a team in an area where there's a need. Where there's a bunch of kids, but there's not really a foot, youth football program in the mm-hmm. area. Right? Mm-hmm. That's kind of yes. what I'm doing. That's kind of yes. what I'm doing, right? Yes. The closest youth football program is about 15, 20 miles down the road. Nobody wants to travel that far to put their kids, right? All right. So you can do that. Or number two, you can be the purple cow. Okay. Mm-hmm. I like that. So <laughs> you have to assess which I, I already kind of got an assessment of the lay of the land up there in Detroit. You have same to thing that you said. Yeah. The exactly same thing, forming these super teams. Yep. So so what you do when you have an oversaturation of teams, basically you have a lot of quantity and not a lot of quality. Mm-hmm. You got to be seen as the quality program in your yeah. league, the standard in your league. Yes. Because what that's going to do, you may not have all the players year one that you want, yeah, but I guarantee you by year two or year three, you're gonna have other programs looking at you and saying, What in the hell he doing? Because he's attracting a high standard, high caliber kids, high caliber Man. kids. That's that's what I do. That's what I do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> it has worked, it has worked for me the last seven years or so, mm-hmm. where when they hear Coach Beast. You know, they know that, oh, man, like literally I have local coaches 
here in this area, they hit me up for advice. Like, bro, like, what should I do? Do you want to? I get invitations to other leagues and other cities all the time. Why? Because they, my reputation precedes me for building high level quality youth football programs. You feel me? Oh, coach, I think you're on mute. Can you hear me now? I got you now. Yeah. All right. All right. I see what happened in that. All right. Yeah. You totally right. You totally right. And I had that ideal in my mind. And it's funny you say that because some of the leagues, that's that's some of the some of the teams and orgs that's more successful, they had the same kind of mentality that's been here. Yeah. It's the same thing. And um, I, I I I do believe you know um, it's down the street from me where we based at. East Point used to be a place. I'm going to tell you, we used to go to East Point to, to take kids and still get, get kids because there wasn't nothing here. You know yeah. what I mean? And that particular team, we knew that they didn't coach right. Kids wasn't happy. But we got to start, and I know it, it has to start with the front office and the quality. You have to make your, your org seem, you know, it has to be a quality org it's to stand out. And that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. That that <laughs> that really that really like I had the the put the pieces, I got the pieces and I'm looking at them like a puzzle and I'm like which okay and, and now it's all starting to it's starting to come you know and I and I do believe we're going to be all right come year two even this year, yeah. you know uh, even this year you know what I'm saying, and um, I do appreciate this man I man I, I boy, man no problem no man, problem at wish, all man it's so all the mistakes. You said it happened, that happened to me. Mm -hmm. Every single one. The way that you said it happened, it <laughs> happened. And I was just like, oh, my God. I thought it was just me going through this. You know, it, it happened, man. It, it's, it's at another level, man. You know, I see a lot of youth football coaches who are really having a hard time because, unfortunately, there's been such a generational change in the way parents parent their kids, the yes. way kids think about football, you know. I mean, think about it this way. When you and I was playing sports, right, mm -hmm. like it was football, maybe basketball, you know, but football was king, you know. Mm -hmm. And nowadays you have kids who they like basketball. You know, I have kids who like soccer. Yeah. Even baseball, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that. I actually think kids should play multiple sports, mm -hmm. you know, as they grow. However, you're competing against an ideology that football is dangerous and football yes. is, you know, not safe for kids. And so you have a certain group of kids who just don't want to play. You have certain parents. Mm -hmm. And this is the critical issue that I, I see is that you have parents who I hate to say it this way, but let's just keep it 100. Right. Mm -hmm. You have, you know, maybe single moms that never played football. Right. Yeah. Never been on that field. Don't know how it is to, to be in those trenches, right? Mm -hmm. And so when their son, Lil Johnny, come to sign up and he have a tough practice and don't want to play no more, mama like, all right, you know, I mm -hmm. told you you shouldn't have played anyway. All right, we could put you in basketball or something else. Mm -hmm. But if it was one of those guys like us who played sports and, you know, the kid hit some adversity, we like, look, this is a part of the process, son. This way yes. you get better. So we're yes. running you know, so we're running into this issue now, right, where we got a new generation of parents that never played the sport. So when they kid enter adversity or even if they just watching media, they don't want their kid to really be in football at all. You know what I'm saying? Until middle school or high school. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly that. You hit it spot on. So you hit it spot on. And these parents are deaf. They next level now, man. Yeah, <laughs> man, they, they they really next level now, man. And I'm looking like, oh, my God. Yeah. And it's just that. And if you look at it, it's just the way the world is going now. And how kid, how parents is parenting their kids, you know. Yeah. And it's starting to link on to our football fields. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And, 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 and you're totally right. I done seen that, too. Oh, it's too violent. It's too this, you know, that, that, you know, I done seen it. I done seen it. I done seen it. I done seen it. Oh, my God. <laughs> I could talk to you all day about right. that. But, yeah, I'm definitely going to put, I'm 
and I knew that I was doing. I'm definitely going to, you know, get these coaches things, get these coaches coached up, and and really focus on the organization and what we stand for and what we want to put out there, and make sure that the president's on the same page as me, which she is, because she's yeah. lost right now. You know, she's yeah, lost. Yeah. Yeah, and you know sometimes you know you have a president that's really good in the administra- administrative. She's class. good at that. Yeah, she, and she does her best, but you know, like when it comes down to football, she just may not know. You know, and that's where you come in to kind of spearhead, you know, football operations, mm-hmm. and you look at yourself as head of football or player development and operations. When you mm-hmm. think that you put yourself in that frame, mm-hmm. um, you know. The, the program is going to begin to take on its own shape and form once your DNA mm-hmm. is put into that thing, right? You right. I think you're going to be fine. You're in the right place. You and B style, you coach. Well, brother. I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, this gives me so much more confidence, you know, because I, I boy, you know, I can't even begin, you know. You know, and then I and this is something else that far as the X's and O's coaches I've been fighting with. I, yeah. it's like, I, I want to, it's like, I love my air raid. Oh, I love it. But I know <laughs> that that's going to be tough, you know, kind of teaching it on an eight U level and even a 10 U yeah. level. Right. Even though I did it before, but I thought, was it me having super teams? Why they was able to pick up one? You know what I mean? Could, could be, you know, cause you know, I look like, like, and it took years, like my first championship coach, I didn't know my, my, my friend put me up on, he was like, do you know, you had these boys since they was like nine years old and now they 12. And I was just put, and I installed the air raid and they just, it took a man on his own. Yeah. Like you said, they was out there checking off plays on their own and just playing like yeah. it was, you know, and we was just 45 zip, just yeah. killing people, you know, um, you know, we went to regionals. We won last game to, to, to go to, you know, Florida, we ran against an Indiana team, and they only had two teams in Indiana. And when I tell you, Coach, they had 50 boys, and they, they line looked like high school. And I yeah. know that they was the eight. Right. I was like, whoa, you know what I mean? And we scored two times, and he came. He was like, Coach, ain't nobody scored on us in two years. Wow. That, that made me feel good. And they, I, mean, they, I had to go in the bag because – them big old boys was coming off that line, coach, and I had to. Mm-hmm. We just had to keep checking, checking, well, checking. It was just <laughs> I couldn't. They was huge. Yeah, <laughs> they was huge, and we was and we was big. But and then they and then they had they they and I and I learned something from them, and I learned this. They used their offensive line like a hammer. Yeah, and we they hammered me. We stayed with them. We kicked back. They hammered me. We hit back. They hammered me. But in that third quarter. They, they 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 nailed me. You know that that line just kept coming at me. They kept coming at me, and they kept coming at me. And it was like, damn. And then they yeah. was coming at me, and it was like we didn't have enough firepower. You know. Yeah, man. Uh, you know that that's you've been following me for a while. You know. Yes. You know the number one I think I teach is O line. You know mm-hmm. because O line what what a good O line would do is it wears a team down, and it wears a team down mentally first. Right. You know, mm-hmm. you could be playing and, you know, like you said, they was hammering you, you ba- you'll bounce back. They're hammering you, you bounce back. By that third or fourth quarter, you know, mm-hmm. your team is so beat up mentally, physically, and emotionally that you just don't have the same intensity mm-hmm. as you would have. You know, that that's kind of my <laughs> that's kind of my thing. I'm like I always mm-hmm. like recruit look for my big boys first yes and i actually coach my o-line and i give one of my assistant coaches the skill guys because down here we got skill players galore right they just need running lanes but when we got a line that can blow people off the ball and they the best blocking team in the league it's hard to beat so it's hard yeah and going back to your point though about the air raid and we'll get ready to wrap this up okay um you know, this, this is my thing, and this is something I learned over the years, Coach, is that, you know, for a while I was a double wing coach. Me too. Yeah. Then I ran <laughs> – um, I started running jet. Mm-hmm. And then I, I started to have a mixed bag. I, I ran like a single back formation, mm-hmm. two-by-ones, 
that was really great. It was in in a way, it was kind of like a spread because I would put my single bag. I have him. We'll we'll do an audible, and I have um I move him to a trip set. Right. We'll go, we'll go trips and just teams didn't know what to do. They don't right? know. They don't know. <laughs> right. So <laughs> I've done a lot of things, but what I've learned throughout the years, and I, I kind of feel like I'm preaching to the choir when I say this, is that you truly have to have your formations, have your playbooks, but then as you train your kids and develop them, you know what's going to be the best outfit playbook yeah. package for them right mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. that, this is why i create all these different variations of the beast because as you go online you know i'm not the only guy that talks about the beast formation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. however i seen me running the beast exclusively for the last what three four years now i've seen the need to where okay we can go into a power mode and you know just the base set mm -hmm. okay now we can go into a flex now, because I got some speed kids, I got some kids that's better in space, running in space, mm -hmm. or, damn, I got a really good quarterback and some really good wide receivers. Let me do some RPOs. Yes. And that's why I diversified the beast offense the way that I did for coaches, because while you're doing what you're doing with your squad, you may discover that, okay, damn, I got a hybrid quarterback that can run in space. And I got, mm -hmm. you know, three other kids that are great running backs. Maybe the beast wide set would be better. Okay. And, and me running in a shotgun, running some flex stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe you've got some big linemen and a, a powerful quarterback or two really good running backs. Let me stay in the base set and let's just beat these guys up. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do, coach, is, and this is something I had to do. Like I've been through what you where you're going through. Give yourself two to three weeks to assess your talent to see yes. what you got, right? And based on what you get, you will know how to adjust your offense. And of course, we doing these brotherhood, you know, meetings. So if you need to bounce that off me, that hey, coach, I got a, a hybrid guy. He can throw, but he's he can run. What will you suggest? Well, I'm gonna say, how is your O line? How are they, are the average blockers? Are they dominant? What is your assessment on it? How are your wide receivers? Then. We can assess, okay, maybe you need to look at the beast wide set or the beast um, spread mm -hmm. instead of RPOs if you don't have good wide receivers. Okay. You know, so of course, as we continue to grow and go along this process, we'll know a little bit more about what to do. Yeah, we will. We will. Yeah, we will. Because I looked at the uh, RPO, you know, and I'm like, I seen how you packaged it. And yeah. And I, it was so much like how we package in air raid yeah. as far as, um, you know, we would may do a few things and we hitting you. You don't know where we're going to hit you from because right. we got three or four options. Right. And um, I think that's where football is going. And I think if you can train your team to do stuff like that and your line hold up, you're going to be tough. That's what makes you dangerous. Yes. You got to be set, a off, uh, uh, you know, unbalanced line where you can go power at any time. But mm -hmm. then you in an air raid, you know, and I and to that point, I put some air raid in there. I put mm -hmm. some run and shoot offense in there, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When, you, when you when you can teach your quarterback, okay, depending on the way the cornerbacks or DBs are positioned, mm -hmm. you can hit them on a go. You can have a quick slant. You can do a call to where the quarterback just take off with the ball. You're a dangerous team. You're a dangerous team because you got so much. You got linebackers got so much they got to look for, especially when right. you got that quarterback that he can take off at any given time. Any given time. Oh man, that 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 is the danger of everything right there, boy. Oof. 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 <laughs> I've been a defensive coach, and I had to worry, and I just had to go back to what used to give me problems. And it right. was when they line up in one formation and they hit me with all type of plays. Right. I hate it, and then they put a motion in there. I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. You know, because I, I, I was like, oh, now my linebackers, they're not, they're looking for things. You know, they're not playing. Up, but it was great rapping with you. I, you know, this was whew. awesome, man. This was an awesome experience, man. You know what I mean? And I'm glad I, I teamed up with you. You know what I mean? And I think it's going to be valuable to me getting this, this org off, off the ground, you know? 
Yeah, man. Hey, I, I appreciate you, man. I, I appreciate your support and, and just following oh, yeah. me on all platforms and all of that, man. And, you know, this just the beginning, you know, with the brotherhood and all of that. And I started it for this purpose, man. I, I want to be there for you guys as mm -hmm. you grow and as you do what you do. And we in this together as well. You know, um, you know, I'm going to be able to share my experiences starting this new team in a completely new area with a completely different culture. Like, yes. you know, usually I've coached in urban areas. This mm -hmm. is more of a rural slash suburban area. Mm -hmm. They love football. It's just rural and it's a plethora of kids. And these parents are already, you know, ready and amped up. So it's a different experience, you know, from what I usually deal with in more of an urban area. Right. So. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So, so this is cool, Coach, man. Well, um, that's it, man, for this this first yeah, this, live, this man. Great. Do you have anything you want to say? Well, I mean, I just want I wanted to tell you, you know, last year. When I went and we went to the regionals, mm -hmm. what I'm gonna add that I thought I didn't I didn't notice till they did it to when the game was over. They, you know, they came out and they big package, right? With mm -hmm. kids that maybe I think that them kids was just taught to wedge. Yeah. And they beat me down every so often, you know, and that wasn't even they stood. Yeah. And all of a sudden, these other gang of kids come in. And they, they faster, and I'm like, I am still in that. I'm still in that. <laughs> I'm still in that for my second string guys. If they, we could just teach them to do two, one or two things, man. And 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 that's how they beat me. And I'm gonna yeah. be this real. That is how they beat me. And I didn't even notice that that that's what they was doing until the third quarter when it all started going down. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> they, they switch back. That's beautiful. Yeah, and and I say this when we get off here. Mm -hmm. Um. That was kind of what I did, you know, when we was putting up 72 points. We put up mm -hmm. 72 points in our championship game. I had, man, four running backs that could have been a starting running back on any other team. But they oh, all man. had they all had different skill sets. Mm -hmm. I had a kid that was just great with, like, acceleration, north and south speed. Mm -hmm. If he hit the hole, he gone, right? Yeah. Then I had a kid that was balanced. He'll run you over or he'll juke you out your shoes. Mm -hmm. Then I had just a power running guy, like a fullback type. And then I had a speed demon that was kind of like a, a a hybrid, you know, player like like Jim, um, Jamar Gibbs with Alabama, just a hybrid guy. So I had that skill set, and mm -hmm. I would literally switch my packages up based on the skill set of those different those four different running backs, That's and we tough. just beat up on them. We wedged them, you know, we <laughs> down blocked them. We did whatever we knew that would exploit these teams, and we were just beating the brakes off of teams, you know. Yeah, that's man. So man, 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 I'm gonna get I'm gonna get the kids I get it. We're gonna coach them up, man. That's right. We're gonna that's coach right. them up to the to, to the highest of our ability, coach. And I appreciate this, man. This is a good thing. Can't hey, wait to talk to you again. Man, my pleasure, coach. My pleasure. And but uh, I, I, I am gonna I am gonna I'm gonna tell you like this that um RPO system. Oh man, I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay. I'm already seeing how I can install it. The days I could, how I could do it, and how you packaged it. It was, it was so, it was nice. Like wow, that. wow, <laughs> that's awesome, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And for coaches who are watching this video on mm -hmm. replay, um, especially if you're watching this on YouTube, you mm -hmm. can join the Beast Out You Brotherhood. I got the link in the description box, and. I'm telling you, my goal is to have the largest community of youth football coaches in the world, because I believe that we need to make youth football great again, literally yes. great again. And we need to make it great again. And so Beast Out You Brotherhood, this is where it begins. This is what it's all about. So be sure to join the Brotherhood if you haven't already coach man thank you again man for jumping on man i'm looking mm -hmm. forward to it i know i'm gonna see you again right oh yeah man hey hey we in, hey we in this to the long run coach <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up all, all right, right coach man you have a good one man and for you everybody too. else who watching until next time peace out peace